Hey, David Raffoff here. Uh, I just thought I'd give you a quick tour of a little uh, tech spike I've been doing. Uh, so I've been trying to learn um, a whole new stack, basically. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, just a quick demo of what I've done with that. Uh, obviously, I'm super shallow on all the pieces here, but um, basically I'm using uh, Phoenix and Elixir and then Absinthe and GraphQL and Ecto um, to... Uh, set up a little GraphQL uh, uh, interface here um, to update purchases or to be able to list purchases, uh, update them, create them, show them, delete them, all the normal uh, CRUD stuff. <clears throat> so uh, I'll just show you what this looks like when it runs. So here's uh, just a GraphQL query being run and you can see it's pulling up uh, these purchases over here on the right. And then we could hop over here and just say, uh, show me just one of those. And we get back just the one. We can go uh, to delete and say, get rid of that last one. Actually, let's create one first. We'll create it, update it, and delete it. Um, let's just say we're going to buy Lord of the Rings for 50. Uh, yeah, this is kind of cool too. I mean, this will do both the create and then also uh, return back the uh, relevant info here. So we'll just run that. And here we can see we got a new um, purchase. Uh, it's number six for Lord of the Rings and there's the price. And then we could hop over here and say, update, um, let's just update the price on that to be, four, uh, let's make it something else, 35. 99 or whatever something to differentiate it from the other ones we'll run that um oh it looks like i have to include a name too all right and don't forget the commas so there we go got updated uh, item with a new price same name and then we can also delete that over here. And there we can see that item was deleted. And then just one final check, we can go over and look at the list again and it should be out of that list. So now we've got one, uh, ID5 is the last item in that list. So behind all this is the Phoenix app. Um, just hop over to that real quick. So you can see here, it's just responding um, to all those requests in the background. Um, yeah, and there's Absinthe doing its uh, work with uh, graphy Graphical. Um, and then hop over to the code for a second. <clears throat> so in the code, um, the request will come in here through the router um, sorry, under this uh, API scope, get piped through to API. And this is going to handle the graphical interface. And then these, this is going to handle GraphQL. You can see it's using this uh, schema from Financial Elixir Web. So over here, this just includes the um, data types. And that's just describing what these objects uh, should look like. And also what the <clears throat> parameters look like when updating uh, one of these uh, purchases and then essentially it's handling the different requests coming in so here's a query block and that's includes both the um, list of purchases query and the individual uh, show request for a purchase um, and it's just saying uh, this thing's going to return a list of purchases and this is where you need to go to do the work um, and I'll, I'll take a look at that in a second. And then similarly here, if you're looking up <clears throat> an individual purchase, uh, you need to pass in an ID, can't be null. And then um, this is the function that you want to run. Uh, so all these will be under resolvers for the report. Uh, and then down here is a mutation block and it has um, three different cases that it's handling, create purchase, update purchase, and delete purchase. Um, you can see for the create that we have to have a name and a price that can't be null. And those are the types 
maybe a string and a float. And then again, it's going to call the uh, relevant um, resolver. And then similarly, update will take an ID, non null integer, and uh, it'll take a purchase that has this shape. So this is that data type that we looked at. It's the update purchase params from over in our data types. Uh, and again, it's going to call a resolver. And then similarly, delete purchase will take a uh, require an integer ID and then call um, our resolvers. Uh, so we can hop over and take a look at those. And these are uh, mainly taking the arguments that are coming in and um, calling uh, functions on uh, this report uh, and returning uh, uh, an OK status with the result of that. So uh, this one's going to return OK and the list of uh, purchases that come back. This one is going to pull the um, match on the ID out of the args and make that available and then return OK with uh, that individual purchase. Um, create purchase is just going to pass along uh, whatever args it has to the reports create purchase uh, function. And then if it comes back with a, a OK, it's just going to return OK in the, the purchase. And if there's an error, it's going to throw this um, just kind of temporary error in here. And then the other uh, ones are pretty similar. Update purchase um, matches on uh, args for an ID and for a purchase. And um, similarly, if everything works out, it's going to look up the purchase and then uh, call report that update purchase with both the purchase and the params that came in. Sorry, the purchase params. And if it fails, it's going to say uh, couldn't update it. And then delete's pretty similar. It's going to grab the ID out of the args, um, try to look up the purchase, uh, and then pass that along to uh, report.delete purchase. Uh, so you might be wondering, <clears throat> where is report and all these functions that are getting called? That's just over, um, over here. So uh, this is backed um, uh, by Ecto and is uh, relying on the repo. And it just has these um, functions in here that it's using to call um, uh, the repo to make changes or to pull data. So here... List purchases is going to call repo.all for purchase, so it's going to get back all the purchases. Um, get purchase is going to take an ID and just look for a purchase with this ID off of the repo. Uh, create purchase uh, is going to uh, get a fresh purchase, um, uh, pipe that into a change set with the attributes that were sent in, and then insert that in the repo. And update purchase uh, does something very similar. And uh, probably not a big surprise here. Yeah, delete just calls uh, repo.delete with that purchase. And uh, change purchase is just going to apply the change set uh, to the provided uh, purchase. And I think that's more or less it for what's interesting here. There's also uh, just the schema here and the um, change set definition for a purchase. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is all pretty um, surface. I, I don't definitely no expert on any part of this yet, but it was just kind of exciting to get it working end to end and thought I would share uh, what it looks like. So um, pretty cool. I've been excited to mess around with all of these tools here um, and was pretty, pretty happy to get uh, GraphQL running with uh, Phoenix and Elixir. So I'll, I'll kind of use this to for me, um, the best way for me to learn is to do something hands-on and just read about it and learn a little more at a time. So this will kind of be my test bed for trying stuff out. So I'll probably uh, share more as I get into it. But thanks for watching this video and uh, stay tuned for more.